Looking for a way to get healthy? The Chef You and I program has the answer. Catherine Raker and chefs from around the nation will teach even the most inexperienced how to cook. Come into their kitchen and watch them take ordinary foods with loads of calories and fat and turn those foods into healthier dishes. You will be the first to get tips and ideas on foods that are easy to prepare. Now let's join Catherine and today's chef and learn how to make today's recipes. Hi, this is Catherine Raker of The Chef You and I. I want to welcome you to my show. I want to thank our sponsors, 360 Pans, uh, AmeriCraft Cookware, uh, actually uh, our wonderful Corn Huskers Duck Fat Gourmet Spray, um, also our wonderful honey sponsor, Be Healthy Honey uh, Farms, and so many others that we have on our show. But Today we're making some really wonderful winter foods, and that includes cream of potato and leek soup, and also creamy tomato soup. We're making a bruschetta for, you know, a lot of times when there's games on, either football, basketball, whatever, we want something really to munch on. And I found a wonderful, wonderful bruschetta, a classic Italian bruschetta with pita crackers, and we're going to be making that. But the first thing that we're making today is, and I made this last week just to try it out because I wanted to make sure that it was going to be yummy, 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 and it is. And actually, I used Sunkissed Wonderful Oranges, and they had a wonderful recipe. You know, Sunkissed Naval Oranges, it's a chocolate bark. So the first thing is that if you want to get a dark chocolate chip, because it's really important in, when you're doing this so that when you see the whole thing, and we made some ahead of time so you could see them, what it looks like, right? So what we need for our recipe today is 10 ounces, or actually I'm making 20 ounces of dark chocolate chips. And here is my wonderful melting chocolate. And we're going to add the rest of the chocolate chips to it to make it even better. So I want to fill that, and we have a parchment paper Thing that we're going to put it on it as soon as it's all melted but in the meantime what we need to do is we need to actually grade these wonderful oranges so that we'll have orange zest on top of it so i'm going to use this and this and i'm going to zest this orange so that we have the zest that we need and we actually need four tablespoons because we doubled the recipe um for this and so this is what we're doing and we're using a um, I tried zesting it with something else and this is the best way to zest it actually so you want to zest because you want that peel and it has a wonderful taste to it I can tell you once you start eating it you will want to never stop eating it it's so good so we're doing some fun and funky recipes today our potato and leek soup is a creamy one in our tomato, it's a tomato basil soup, it's a cream tomato basil, and our bruschetta. And I think we're gonna have a lot of fun today because everything is just so fun and simple. And we're gonna be teaching people how to cook as well, not only on our show, but we've had, we've had two or three people ask me if I would give a cooking lesson, which I have no problem doing. But in the next few weeks, we're gonna have some other chefs that come on um, our show. Because you're going to see me in a little cast like you saw me last year. So, but don't worry. We're going to be able to have our shows as usual. So, and if you haven't been watching, we are doing all of our stuff is not only up on all the networks that we're on, but all of our recipes and the television shows up on our website, The Chef You and I. So you want to do about two oranges, right? That makes enough zest. And this is the easiest way to do it. You don't want the really messy zest that you use for other things. You want to see the peel. So here's what we're doing. So that one's about done. And that is almost a tablespoon. So we'll do another one. So you can do a lot of things here in the kitchen with us. And if you've got any recipes, please send them to me at KatherineRaker123 at Gmail. And go up to our website at the Chef You and I, and please send our recipes. And you can send them to Post Office Box um, 23, uh, 
And that's Cleves, Ohio, 452 zero, no, 45002. Let me say that again. Send us your recipes either by email at kraker123 at gmail.com or you can send your recipes to K- Catherine Raker, the chef you and I, at 023, box 023, um, at Cleves, Ohio, 45002. That's where my post office is. So please do that. We'd love to have your recipes. And if you want to convert them to a, a healthier recipe, you can do that as well. Okay, so we need to stir these chocolate chips. As you can see, I've already got chocolate chips in there. And I love this me- melting pot. I've done it with my granddaughter. It's so simple. And it's so easy to use. And you can use it for everything from strawberries to whatever. And we're almost done with that. And as soon as it finally totally melts, um, we're going to spread it onto this parchment paper. So just a second. Wait a minute. We'll come right back to it. Let's see how much we have. We have almost two tablespoons. Okay. Or maybe four. Whatever you want to do. Because we're adding coconut. And if you're allergic to coconut and you can't use coconut, you can use something else on it. And we're using slivered almonds. So if you're allergic to salt, you know, you can always put um, anything like a dried, dried bananas. You could use anything, actually. So we love to create new recipes here on The Chef, you and I, as well. So we're almost done. I think that's almost four. So we just need to do this a little bit. You could use cranberries, cran apple berries. You could use all kinds of different things, dried. You know, anything that gives it a little color, actually. And, you know, one of these days we're going to teach you how to dry stuff as well. We've done that in the past. And it's great because, you know, sometimes you can't find things. And, by the way, we're making all kinds of new spices without things that are people are allergic to and I really enjoyed doing that and we made a new barbecue sauce that we hit up on our website and we did it two weeks ago and it turned out great so anyhow I think we have enough here okay so let's try this let's see yeah I think we have enough you just have to make sure you get it all out right there we go and if you don't like orange you could use lemon there's lots of different things that you could use so we're going to put this over here I'm going to rinse my hand off, and it gets really messy. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is make sure that your chocolate is totally melted. It's getting there, so it doesn't take that long, but you can do it in a double boiler. I mean, over the stove, you can do it, but this is a lot faster and easier to do. And this is 20 ounces of dark chocolate. And even for people that um, are... uh, They need sugar-free. I use a lot of sugar-free. And this happens to be, today, a sugar-free chocolate. And I'm making it for people that are in my family that have diabetes or whatever. They can't have a lot of sugar in their their, um, chocolate. But when you see how beautiful this turns out, it's so wonderful. I was really shocked at how great it was. So we're going to take a little short break, and when we be back, our chocolate will be ready to go, and we'll be able to spread it out. We'll be right back. So I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting! Oh, poop already! You're making me nervous! Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Oh, look, a redhead! (gasps) Staring contest! Still got it. 
I know. Come alive with the forest. But that was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Hi, we're back on The Chef, you and I, and our chocolate is melted. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it on to this parchment paper, right? And then we're going to spread it so that it becomes thinner, right? And we're getting as much out of here as possible. And then we're going to put all this wonderful... Um, the actual uh, almonds and the coconut and of course the orange peel okay and I think we've done enough with this all right now we're gonna spread this all right and you want to spread it all around the parchment paper okay And it's working pretty well. So you want it to be even though. And you're going to put this in the refrigerator, actually. And this way. So it covers the parchment paper. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add our coconut, our coconut and all of our other things that we have to put on top of it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take your orange peel and you want to go like this with it. Right? So it covers the whole thing. Gives it a lot of brightness, don't you think? And, you know, you could use lemon peel. You could use, I don't think, grapefruit peel would be the greatest but anyhow and then you want to take your nuts all the way over and like I said you don't have to use the coconut or the nuts if you don't want to you can use other things you can even do other candies like you know let your kids help you do it because this is really a lot of fun for kids right so now we're going to do the coconut all right see how pretty that is and wait till you see what the what the final thing is. And then this will get hard after about an hour or two, right? And then you just it becomes you take the parchment, you lift up the parchment, right? And then what you do, this is the really cool part, right? Then then what you do actually is this is so cool. You start breaking it off. And by the power of television, we actually have some already finished. So we're going to take this and put this in the refrigerator. And just a moment, we have the piece de resistance. We have the actual chocolate that I made. And look how cool it comes out. Isn't that really sharp looking? Look at that. And it's delicious, absolutely delicious. And that's what you're going to get in the end. And you're going to love it because it's so tasty. Believe me, I love it. And so does my family. We'll be right back on The Chef You and I after these important messages. And the next thing we're making is our bruschetta. So we're going to do that first. And then we're going to make our soups. Okay, we'll be right back. You've messed up your son's haircut. Ma? Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you've got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, baby. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. On the chef you and I and our second recipe is the classic Italian bruschetta and I got the wonderful recipe off of uh, Kellogg's townhouse pita 
crackers uh, that are sea salt. And there are some I have that are not and some that I have. So if you prefer just without the salt, they have them in so many different flavors today. So this is really simple. It, the ingredients are one and a half cups of chopped and seeded tomatoes, right? Two, one teaspoon of lemon juice, three tablespoons of finely shredded Parmesan cheese, a half teaspoon of onion powder or minced onion, two tablespoons of sliced green onion, one teaspoon of lemon pepper, or I'm using my own that I make myself because there's no garlic in it, one tablespoon of olive oil, one tablespoon of chopped fresh basil, and of course the pita crackers. Um, and if you wanted to ask, you know, you need to um, actually in on the back of the wonderful box is the recipe. We'll have it on ours as well. But it's actually for the garlic part of it, it is a half teaspoon of minced garlic. So I, because I'm allergic, you all know, so we're going to do it now. So it's really simple. Um, we need to chop up the basil, right? And I love fresh basil. It's so good. And it really has a wonderful smell and taste to it. But if you don't like basil, you can use parsley. You can use whatever you want. Okay? But I use fresh basil. And we've made this before, and it's absolutely delicious. So, now, I've chopped up these tomatoes. Okay, I don't actually need the blender for this. We're going to be using this with our tomato soup in just a little while. So what we need, I need to get a bowl. So just a second. Okay, so what I'm going to do is actually put it in this bowl so you can see it. Okay, so you're going to combine everything that I'm chopping up in the bruschetta. So let's do this. And then I'm going to do the onions. You need two onions two green onions because you wanted to give it a little bit of flavor so we're going to chop those up and then I'm going to chop up some more tomatoes over here because I didn't have any um, chopped tomatoes so I actually use fresh tomatoes I use compare tomatoes I got took the seeds out and I chopped these up and it really makes a beautiful bruschetta, actually. And a lot of people are just used to bruschetta on toast, but with pita crackers, it's delicious. Okay, so we'll do that. I'm going to put that in there, okay? And I already have these chopped up. So you need, actually, you need um, one and a half cups of these tomatoes chopped up, all right? And so let's put the rest of these in there. So let's chop up the rest of the tomatoes so that you have it. So let's put it right there. And then I'll add the seasoning in just a minute. So you need these tomatoes chopped up. And I'll show you, if you've never seeded a tomato before, you just take it like this and you get rid of all the seeds. Really simple. Right? All the seeds are now in here. Okay, and I need to rinse my hand off. Okay, now we're going to chop these up. And I'm going to move this over so you can see what I'm doing. And it's, it's just a very simple process. You just start chopping them up like that, making them smaller, right? And I like these little tomatoes because... They're so delicious, they're, they're very sweet, and I happen to like them, and my family likes them. Um, and so anyhow, you'll be seeing us make the tomato soup, but we used canned tomatoes on that one because just much easier. Whole tomatoes I used on that one. So let's use this, put that in there, and you just keep on... I already measured everything, so I know how many tomatoes I needed. So, but the recipe will be on here on the website as well, because we actually do that. And we also, the other thing that we do is it's on YouTube, it's on LinkedIn, it's on all of our stations, on Spectrum, it's on out in California and Vallejo. 
We are also on Simul TV and Black and White Network uh, for our cooking shows and our radio shows. And if you have recipes, like I said, you can always send them in to us, right? Which is really important to do. We took a macaroni years ago that was like 800 calories and made it down to 250. So anything's possible. It's just the way you do it. And everybody can learn how to cook. It, you know, if I could learn how to cook when I was a kid, I was lucky because I was the oldest of our family, right? And I learned how to cook. The first thing I learned how to cook actually was meatloaf. And we are going to do some little few classes on how to make things because people keep on asking me, I don't know how to cook. Will you mind teaching me some simple recipes? Well, it's just a technique, basically, and how you do it. You don't have to be a culinary chef to learn how to cook. And the sooner you teach your kids, the better off they're going to be, you know, when they grow up. And that's important. So we're almost done with this. You can see how fast this is happening, right? We're making a lot because, you know, we like to watch the different games that are out there. And having this bruschetta, it'll last in the refrigerator for a few days. And, excuse me, that's the end of that. And we'll take this away. We'll take a little short break, and when we come back, we'll finish the bruschetta. We're back on the chef, you and I. And the next thing what we're going to do, since we've already got the tomatoes in here and ready to go, we're going to add all of our other ingredients, and that is our olive oil, um, which is actually um, two tablespoons of olive oil is going in there, which I pre-measured, since we're doubling it. I need some lemon juice, so this is one teaspoon of lemon juice. Um, on the instead of using garlic, I told you I'm using I'm using onion powder. So actually, I'm using one tablespoon of onion powder, and that takes the place of the garlic. And then we add the wonderful Parmesano cheese, which is. One in, let's see, hold on a second. Three tablespoons of Parmesan cheese, but I've actually got a little bit more in here because we want this to go to quite a few people. We've got that to serve for our games and stuff like that, which we're serving. So let's put our Parmesan cheese in there and let's mix it up. And then we're going to take and put it into a dish uh, that'll sit in the middle of that. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to add that olive oil. And, and the other thing you want to do is you want to maybe do some salt and pepper in here. Okay. But I have my lemon pepper that I need to put in here. And that really jazzes it up a little bit. Okay. So we'll put this into that bowl. Into this. Right, and then put it in the center of the pita chips. And actually, this serves more than you think it does. But if there's only two or three of you, you can save it for the next day, and it's just as delicious then. So, top it all off. Great, great appetizer. So we're going to move this over and put this in the center. I'm going to move this over, move this over, and bring this over here. And we're going to put it right in the center of our pita tray. And you could do this. Okay? It's totally complete. I would put this in the refrigerator for a little while so it gets cold before your guests come and then serve it like this. They will love it. It's absolutely delicious. So, 
Anyhow, we want to come back in a minute, and we're going to have our two different soups. We're doing cream of tomato basil soup, and we're doing leek and potato soup. And then we'll be all finished. And then our chocolate will be done by that time as well. We'll be right back on The Chef You and I. Live with a human for a while and you get to know a few things. Like, I know she's actually not a morning person. I know she does strange tricks for no treats. I know that water makes her howl like crazy. I even know how the floor stays so clean. She's quick. But the one thing I will never for the life of me know is how she gets so tiny and inside that box. Natalie, how do you get so tiny? on the chef you and I and I love making this soup every single year and a few years ago I used to live in England uh, and one of my British friends taught me how to make potato and leek soup and she makes it a very she made it a very special way and I've served it every year all the time during the winter time especially and then I learned how to make wonderful cold cucumber soup from Robert Carrier, the very famous chef who passed away a few years ago. So this is my recipe for cream of leek and potato soup because it's a cream soup. You're gonna you're gonna blend it in this wonderful major blender, and but we have to cook it first. So the first thing is I've already cut up about four potatoes into cubes, and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. And then you want an onion chopped and diced, which we're going to do right now. Okay. And what a lot of onion because leek is in the onion family. All right. So we're, what we're going to do is some people saute this. Um, actually, what I can do is put it in the microwave and do it like that or just boil it like I usually do. And then what we're going to do is when they're all soft, uh, then we're going to use the, the blender and we're going to make it uh, into a cream situation. Then we're going to add cream. So anyhow, I, sometimes I use my uh, other machine to do this, but it doesn't make any difference. Some people like to actually do it. They like to fry everything or you know, saute it on top of the stove. But I wasn't taught how to do it like that. And I'm, I'm using it from the old recipe that I learned. So once you get this all chopped up, then we're going to add this to the boiling chicken stock and water that I'm boiling on in the 360 pan behind me. And you're going to let that cook into all the vegetables, the leeks and the potatoes actually get tender. And then you're going to do it in batches in uh, that wonderful machine right there. So, and then we're going to make, after this, we're going to make uh, basil, cream of basil and tomato soup, which I love. And a lot of people have already asked me, will you save some for me? Which I'm doing. And I love making soup. And it, you know, especially when it's cold. And here in Ohio, it can get very cold. So, and snowy, and so we like to have things that are make you feel good in the winter time, especially. And you know, you don't have to have a huge dinner. You can have, you could have soup, and you could have grilled cheese sandwiches or something like that. Doesn't make any difference. Well, we're done with that. So now we're gonna cut these potatoes up. And what you want to do is you want to you don't want to make them like you're making them for mashed potatoes. That's for sure. So. And these are yellow potatoes, rusted potatoes rather, and they're so good. So we're making a lot. And actually I'm going to show you how to cut a leek up. Because a lot of people don't, have never made leek soup. And the thing about leeks is when they pull them out of the ground, they clean off the tops of them and stuff, but they're actually got a lot of sand or dirt in them. And... You want to get rid of that. And they're on every layer, usually. 
So I'll show you how to do it. It's pretty simple. I did the other ones already so that we could get that on the on the stove while I'm doing this. Okay? So this recipe is really simple. It'll be up on our Chef You and I site. And like I said, this is pretty simple. And what I did with the potatoes, I put them in cold water so that they wouldn't get looking brown or whatever, right? So here we go. So let's take this wonderful tool right here, put it in with this, and we're ready to go with this. And I'll put in the leeks that I've already cut up and then I'll show you how to do the leeks. This makes it really simple. So, but I'll never forget when I first made leek soup, my friend kept saying, you have to clean it. Make sure that you clean all of that dirt off because that's really important. And I'm also going to add a little green onion to it. And I'm just going to take one out. Maybe I'll use that for the for later when we serve it. So let's put this into the boiling water over here. So I'm going to very carefully, I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to use a spoon. And I'm going to spoon this in. Because it's boiling and I don't want to get burnt. So we want to do this. And, you know, it's like, it's like having the potatoes with like mashed potatoes almost. They need to be that tender. So, and then we have to add the leeks to it, right? So we'll do that in a minute. But I promise some people that I double the size of this because I promise some people that are sick that wanted some leek soup that I would bring them some. So it's always nice to do that, especially when you have a parent or a child or someone that is your next door neighbor that doesn't that isn't well or something that you can bring to them. So now let me bring the leeks over. Thank you. And we'll add the leeks to it. And right, we'll just put those all in. Now that's four leeks. And that's the white part and also the uh, green part. You want that green in there because that gives it a really nice flavor in the end. Okay, so we'll move that over and we'll stir this up and we'll put the top on it. Okay, there we go. And we'll let that go for a little while and we'll show you how to do the leeks now. All right, so put the top on it and turn it back on and let it go. So now I'm going to show you how to do the leeks. So we have to take all of this off. And since I'm making more leek soup, I'm going to show you how to do one of them. Let's do this one. So you want to cut this off, right? And you're going to look and look at the when you look at the leaf, you can see the dirt in it. And so what I do with it, I take this outer leaf off put it right there and you can see all the dirt and if you don't clean this off you're going to have a lot of dirt in your in your soup so we're going to take it I'm going to cut it in the center I'm going to cut some of this off like that and then I'm going to cut it down like this and then I'm going to move the leaves right all right so these are going to go in the garbage so I'll put these in the garbage and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it because I can't show you because I'm not at the sink level. Okay, so I'm going to cut it like that. And then I'm going to take these leaves and the old ones that don't look the good, that good, I'm going to get rid of. And then I'm going to take these leaves and I'm going to put them in and get, get them really clean. If you can see me doing that. You don't want any dirt on here. Okay, so then put them right here. And then what you do, see that dirt right there? You want to take that off. because And see how much dirt is in there? A lot. You want to take these and you want to clean them off as best you can. Right? And what you can do with these now, actually, is you can cut them and put them in some water or whatever. and Or cook them right away. And now you have clean leaves. And that's what you need. 
clean leaves. And then you can cut them and put them in like I did before. So and we'll do the second one right here. We'll cut it off again. And cut the bottom part up there. Because we don't need that. And then look at it again. And you can see the dirt. And you don't want that dirt. So what you want to do, since we're cutting it all the way off, we're cutting it up. We're going to put these. And if they look old, you want to get rid of them, right? The other ones you want to put in water, right, in the sink or wherever. And make sure that they look good, right? And these look really good. So we'll save these. And then you want to cut this one in half. Right? And see all the dirt in there? You want to put that in there and you want to get all that dirt out. So I'm doing every individual leaf like that. And that. So that there's no dirt on it. And that's what you find in a lot of vegetables. But you've got to be careful with, with leeks because you don't know what's in that ground. You know, unless or you make you do it yourself but now that you've got the leaks you want to take that and I would clean this and put more water in it and make sure there's no no dirt so I'll do that real quick and then you can add them to this soup which we can do because we've got enough in there let's do that and we'll make enough for the whole neighborhood, probably. But that's the important thing. And I'm going to turn this over because, actually, I don't, I want to put these in here, right? And I don't want a dirty board. I'll clean that top in a little while. And then I'm going to chop these up for you. And we'll put them in the soup. Pretty simple. We're going to take a short break. We're going to put this in the soup, and we'll be right back. We're back on The Chef, you and I, and I'm making my homemade tomato basil soup, cream of tomato and basil without garlic. If you want garlic, you can put garlic in it. I use onion instead. So I'm going to take, this was one yellow onion, right? And I'm going to do it in the food processor. And then I'm going to do it in the microwave instead of doing it on top of the stove, right? Because actually, it's, it's a lot lighter instead of using, it'll do the same thing on top in the microwave. So let's put it in here. And we're going to chop this all up. And since you're going you're gonna to do the same thing, you're going to blend it, you're not going to see all the vegetables you're only going to see the cream of tomato and basil soup that you love when you go out for dinner, probably. Okay? All right, so that's how much onion I want to use. And then I'm going to do this, and I'm going to chop it. That looks good. Looks really good. So I'm going to add this. I'm going to add a little butter to this, and I'm going to put it in the microwave. And... That's two tablespoons of, of um, butter. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of oil, okay? And then I'm going to add my onions. All right. I don't need this. But I need this. And I'm going to also add some celery to it. So... We're going to chop up the celery because I don't want to do it in the, the micro, not the microwave, but I don't want to do it in the immersion thing. So we're just going to chop it up and it'll get really um, soft. And that's basically what I want it to do. So this is like maybe one stalk of celery altogether. So it just gives it a nice taste. And I'm going to use oregano and chopped tomatoes. And those were canned tomatoes uh, as well. So let's do this. 
chop it up just a little bit more, okay? And they'll get real soft. But remember, we're gonna use it in the in the blender, so it's gonna be all blended up, so you don't have to worry. So what I will do is I'm gonna add this, and I'm gonna put this in the microwave and let it get done for a few minutes, because then we're going to add the tomatoes and the wonderful People use vegetable stock. I'm using chicken stock with, you know, sodium-free because a lot of people that I know are on a salt-free diet or a limited salt diet. So we're going to put this into the microwave for a minute, and I'm going to add a little bit of basil to it, okay? And I've got some frozen, I think, basil over there somewhere. I'm not sure, but we'll, we'll do that. We're going to put this in the microwave. And we're going to put it in here for a, like three or four minutes. About three minutes. And when that's done, we'll come back and we'll add all the other things to our soup. And we're going to add, actually, here's our, this is actually 28 ounces of chopped tomatoes with no seed. And you want the juice. And what I did, since I didn't have any chopped tomatoes, I used whole tomatoes. And I got rid of the, um, the seeds, and what I did then was I chopped them up. So if you don't have chopped tomatoes, you can do it, or you can do it with fresh tomatoes, one or the other. So we'll be right back after these important messages on The Chef You and I. We're back on The Chef You and I, and our celery and onions and a little bit of basil, and we're going to add some more basil now. And I actually freeze my basil, so you'll see it. So it looks like this, and since this is basil and tomato soup, you need enough basil in it. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're going to pour in, this is two pints of chicken uh, broth. We're going to add the tomato juice from the chopped tomatoes. We're going to add... And this, is, this was actually 24 ounces of tomatoes. And like I said, we're going to grind that all up. And then what we're going to do, hold on. So I'm going to add a little bit of oregano to it right here. And then I'm going to put the lemon juice. And actually, uh, the lemon juice is about, I would say, about three tablespoons. Okay, then we're going to add the lemon and pepper, and I just want to use about a teaspoon of lemon and pepper, just a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to add that to it, and um, this was our olive oil. We don't need any more olive oil, so we'll do that, and now I'm going to add this. This is the celery and onions, right, that we, we did. And actually, this is going to get a creamed effect. So we're going to go ahead and cook this for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then, so it's got wonderful butter in it and some olive oil. So they're translucent now. You can see that. And it's so much faster, I think. So we're going to move this over here. And we're going to add a little bit of oregano to it. Okay, and I mean a pinch. You don't want a lot of oregano in here. All right, that should do it. And then we'll, later on, we'll put these on. Okay, we'll put this on the, uh, we'll put this on the stove. And um, I'm going to add a little water to it because I don't want it to be very salty. So I'm going to add some water, maybe about a cup of water. And then we're going to turn it on and let it cook for a little while right here. And that'll be great. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. And our other soup is done now. So we'll be able to cream it. Uh, we'll be able to chop it up and cream it and show you how to do it 
cream of potato and leek soup. We'll be right back. Good. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Oh boy. We just found it. Oh. Our back and forth. Okay. Victory. Fumble. Repeat. It always came back. <laughs> Dad! Whoa! You made time. That was perfect. Okay, here we go, throw it! <laughs> yeah! You probably don't remember what you told me. Nice. But I heard every word. the chef you and I and all of our leeks and potatoes are done and what we're going to do is we're actually putting the leeks and the potatoes into the immersion or whatever you call it uh, food processor okay and it's a little messy because there's a lot of moisture there but we're trying to get rid of it here and then we'll just blend this and then we'll pour it into that pan right there Okay, that's enough. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put the top on. And I need, you're going to add butter to this to make it creamier. So I'm going to add that stick of butter. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to put the top on. Yeah, right. Okay, there we go. And now we're going to pulse it. Okay, so we're going to hit the power and then blend. Okay, okay, so I'm going to add the cream to this. All right, then we're going to blend it, because it'll all blend together in the end, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to bring it over here, and we're going to bring it down, and then we're just going to blend it. All right, that's pretty well blended. So now we're going to add this to the pot, okay? So we're just going to do this, which makes it really simple, and we're going to pour it into the pot. All right, and now take it over here. And we'll add all of our other ingredients again. So we'll do this which I love about this is so wonderful. And then add the next batch. All right, let's see what it looks like. Looks good. Now I'm gonna add the cream to it. And Put it back in here. Now, 
it looks very well blended. So just move this out, put this on here, and then we're going to bring it over here and we're going to put it into our pan. I can see how beautiful that is. Now, I personally like to actually get all that good stuff in there. I have to wash my hands. But I have, I'm also going to add some more spices to it. I'm going to taste it because it makes a difference what it tastes like if you do this. So let me taste it real quick and then I can decide if I want to put more into it. Like some more lemon and pepper or any other salt and pepper, whatever it may be. So let me taste it. It needs a little bit of lemon and pepper and some salt. So let me get some, actually some pepper, salt and pepper. Then I'm going to use, I'm going to use uh, pink salt to give it a little bit more flavor. Because remember, I used everything that didn't have a lot of salt in it. And so here we go. And then let's add a little bit more lemon and pepper to it. And then we're going to heat it up. And then we're going to serve it. And then we're going to do our tomato soup. See how simple that was to make? And that's how easy it is to make it. That's how easy it is to make it again. So let me put it on to the heat for a little while to warm it up. We're back on the Chef You and I, and we're actually going to use the blender to do the tomato and basil soup, and then we're going to cream it to make it cream tomato and basil soup. So let's start with this. So we're actually taking the tomatoes. We're putting it into, it's really hot. We're putting it into the blender. And I mean, I remember years ago when we first did the shelf, you and I, we had a little funny thing happen. You really have to be careful with blenders, especially if you've got one that has a hole in the top of it and you're doing it. So we're not doing that today. We're actually just going to uh, blend it up and then we're going to add the cream to it and we're going to serve it right away because it's so hot. So let me just do this. All right, get that off the blade a little bit. This really is going to be delicious. We are adding cream to the tomato soup, and I'm blending it. And right now we're going to actually, wait a minute, we're going to do this. And now we're going to pulse it, and we're going to crush it. looks like it, it looks good. So let's just look at it. There, that looks good. So I'm going to actually pour this into the bowl, right? So that, okay. All right, I'm going to pour this into the bowl. All right. That's Wonderful. And we're going to fix that a little bit. Just a second. And then we're going to put, actually, our leek soup in here. Okay, so now we're, we're putting the cream of leek soup into the bowl to serve it. And it's really thick, which is great. And we have all of this in here. And then we're going to put everything out that we made and then serve it. All right, and then I'm going to bring this over here, but I'm going to wipe it off. We're back on the chef, you and I. Everything is done, and even the chocolate is done. So we're going to, this is so easy to do. You just break it off, right, like that, because it's bark, right? And this is thicker than the other one, so it makes a difference. And kids will love it. 
Your guests will love it. It's easy to do and so simple. Right? Makes a lot, actually. And you can put it in the refrigerator. You can freeze this, which makes it nice. And it will last. I mean, it'll make people really happy with this, especially if they're chocolate lovers, which my family is. So you can make it as small or as large as you want to. But breaking it up is the fun part, as you can see. So, anyhow, fill this plate up. And then we've come to the end of our show. But don't forget that you need to go to our website at The Chef You and I to find all the recipes. And we want to thank all of our sponsors today and our regular sponsors, and that is 360 Pans, and you can also find that up on our website. The best pans in the world. They last forever. I love them. And Gourmet Duck Fat Spray by Cornhusker's Kitchen, and all of our other sponsors and new sponsors. And those are the sponsors that we use today. So, here you go. Let's move this along. Put this over here. And we'll put this down here so you can see it. All right. So, see how beautiful that is? So, here it is. Thin and thick. Uh, but let's tell you everything else we've made. We made cream of tomato soup with basil and... Also, our potato leek soup, uh, which is potatoes, leeks, and all of our recipes are up there. And then we did the bruschetta. That was the first thing that we did. And that's what you can do. We did the chocolate, bark chocolate, sun-kissed with oranges, and wonderful coconut. So, we want to thank everybody today. And bon appetit. Don't forget to go to our website at the Chef You and I. Com. Thank you so very much and bon appetit. Thanks for joining us on the Chef You and I show today. We'll be back next week with another great and healthy recipe. Don't forget to visit our website, thechefyouandi.com, for all of our featured recipes, cooking tips, and clips of the show.